Welcome to Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I am Gary Gunderson. Today I am posting a cross-channel collaboration video along with the Blind Sniper, 8mm Mauser Man, and Great Northwest Weaponry, where we are all choosing our favorite military surplus rifle we own, our favorite surplus rifle we don't own, the most practical surplus rifle we own, and the most practical surplus rifle we don't own. Then we repeat the same choices with pistols as well. I am adding links to all of their channels in the description, so be sure to check out their videos. And next week, come back where we each post a response going over our fellow GunTubers' choices. Keep in mind, I am not including ARs or AKs as possible answers, since they would dominate the practical choices, and maybe favorite as well. Choosing a favorite rifle was one I considered carefully because it is a difficult choice. I have some great bolt actions that are fun to run. I have some really cool semi-autos. I have my PPS 43, which is an SBR, so it's not a pistol and is technically a rifle. But when it comes down to it, I just have to go with something I don't think I've actually shown off on my channel before. The SVT 40. The Soviet Union semi-automatic rifle of the Second World War, the most produced semi-auto rifle behind the M1 Garand, whose system was essentially copied by the Germans for the G43, magazine or stripper clip fed with 10 round magazines. This particular example was made in 1941 with an early muzzle device and was refurbished after the war, which you can tell easily by the plum colored bolt. With an adjustable gas system, you can run a variety of 7.62x54 rimmed ammo out of it reliably. And it just looks mean. I've always liked the look of these, especially in this configuration. I think it's a blast to shoot and easily one of my favorites. They do get a lot of criticism. I'm not sure if it's unfounded, anecdotal, or I've just been lucky with my example. But one thing people say is that needs to have a matching magazine because they are not really interchangeable. And if you don't have one, you're in trouble because the reproduction will need to be changed to fit. Well, the reproductions all fit for me and feed with no issues, so I guess I lucked out there. For best practical rifle, I will also go with a semi-automatic and chose the M1 Grand. Bow rifle of World War II for the United States of America. The in-block clips make it quick to feed, quicker than SKS in most cases, which would have been a close second choice. The ammo is readily available and plentiful, and of course, being a semi-auto makes it more practical than most bolt-action rifles. This particular example is a World War II receiver and barrel, and is also fun to shoot. I don't have a lot to say about it because most people are pretty familiar with these, I think, as opposed to the SVT-40. Now for favorite that I do not own and would like to, I'm going to say the PPSH-41, the old Papa Shaw. This is for historical and aesthetic reasons. I like the look of it. I collect a lot of Soviet or Eastern Bloc firearms. It's a piece of great patriotic war history the drum mag is awesome, and it's all around something I would own if I had half a chance. And by half a chance, I mean lots of money. For practical rifle that I don't own and would like to, it is tough, because even without ARs and AKs, you still have a lot of modern rifles to choose from, like an FAL or a G3. But I'm going to say something that may not be as practical, but at least in an intermediate cartridge, and that is the Sturmgewehr. The Assault Rifle. It has a lot of modern features, though these would quickly be surpassed in subsequent generations of firearm development. It is still pretty practical given the standards of the day. I didn't want to go too modern here, so I think this is a pretty nice balance, and honestly, second place for favorite rifle I would like to own after the PPSH. On to some handguns. These were some tough choices as well, but sticking to surplus, which eliminates some of my options that are more practical, such as the modern CZ-75 Omega, and it was still close. I was thinking about choosing my CZ-82, which is a fun, compact, ambidextrous firearm, but instead I am going to choose my Israeli Browning High Power for practical consideration. 
It is well used and carried, but still runs reliably as the ambidextrous safety, which allows me to use it correct handed. Famously, one of the last designs John Moses Browning worked on before he was finished with his mortal coil and the firearm was finished by his protege. It came with 13 round magazines at its release in the 30s, but modern magazines can fit up to 15 plus one in the chamber. I like it a lot and considered choosing it as my favorite pistol, but that would be a bit boring, wouldn't it? So instead, I am going to go with my Nazi occupation produced to Browning High Power. Yes, this is a bit of a cop out, but this is one of the earliest military surplus pistols I purchased for my collection and one I had really wanted. Plus, I like the story of having two firearms made for diametrically opposed regimes I think it's an interesting little quirk of history. Now onto my favorite pistol that I don't own. There are a lot of pistols I want for my collection and it's hard to pick just one out of the running. And you know what? I may change my mind on this tomorrow for all I know, but for today, I am going to go with the C96 broom handle Mauser. It's iconic, somewhat strange in design given how early it was amongst semi-automatic pistols. A well-known design not just amongst firearms collectors, but in pop culture as well. It's definitely something I would like to get, even knowing it is rather awkward in many ways, such as loading and a high bore access. And though not an ideal pistol, one that is certainly interesting and fun. For best practical military surplus I don't own, I'm going to go with a true CZ-85. They are actually surplus, but they still have ambidextrous controls like this modern CZ-75 Omega, but also has the added history of being an actual military sidearm. It is definitely the most modern military surplus firearm I've picked for this list, but it still fits nicely within my collection, which obviously has a large contingent of communist firearms. So that's my list. Let me know what you think of my choices in the comments below. And like I said at the beginning, you will be able to find similar videos posted today by The Blind Sniper, 8mm Mauser Man, and Great Northwest Weaponry. Be sure to check out their channels if you haven't already. And if they sent you over here, take a look around at some of my other videos, as there's all sorts of things I cover, including military surplus, some gear, some news and updates in the firearm world, and a touch of politics for good measure. And if you stuck around this long, I am sure you can find something else to like on the channel anyways. So check it out, and thanks for watching.